Hey guys, welcome back. Wanted to do this quick video on Elite Dangerous. Um, some things I'm currently grinding that I wanted to share with you. Um, atypical disrupted wake echoes, anomalous FSD telemetry, strange wake solutions, and eccentric hyperspace trajectories. These are all for engineering. Um, and so I am currently in the Decate system. You don't need to be in this system, but it works really well for me, and I'm assuming you're probably in this system anyway if you're watching this video. Um, what you want to do is select the fastest ship you have all that matters is speed and if you have an fsd um excuse me not fsd but wake scanner those are the only two things that really matter um for this particular grind um so i like to do this in my mamba just because it's a cool looking ship i'm not particularly great in this ship and i don't really have it decked out but it's super fast and it's got some decent firepower and i also have a wake scanner on it and Honestly, it's pretty much all I use this ship for is doing this grind. Um, but yeah, you're going to need a frame shift wake scanner, and I'm going to upgrade mine. The higher the upgrade, the longer the range it can scan at. And so this max upgrade is for... Uh, four kilometers or 400 or 4,000 meters. Um, the only thing is the higher the tier you go, the more power it draws. So just watch your power draw. Um, but yeah, the, definitely the further away the better because you're going to be in a fast ship. So once you get within the window of scanning, you have to slow down or you're going to have to pitch up to stay scanning. But anyway, let me leave the station. Um, what you want to do is head to the nav beacon, which you have to leave the station to be able to target it. Um, but in your navigation panel, go target your nav beacon and super cruise over there. And I do recommend, and you know, this isn't me being wimpy, but Decate, if you're going to do this in Decate, I do recommend doing it in um, Solo, just because a lot of griefers camp Decate, and if you do this in Open and you're not really ready for PvP, you'll pretty, you'll pretty much guaranteed to lose your ship. Someone's going to grief you, so just a heads up. Um, do it in Solo if you want to be safe. If you want to take the risk, do it in Open. It's up to you, um, but you know, there's no real benefit of doing it in open, in my opinion. But anyway, head to the nav beacon, and um, once you get there, it's going to take a minute. Now, you don't have to scan the nav beacon. I just do that out of habit every time I go. Um, but you're going to have to hang out for, I would say, probably maybe three to six minutes before the wakes start happening. Because you're in solo play, um, things aren't really happening in that area until you get there, and that's when the NPCs start spawning in. And so you've kind of got to wait for some NPCs to jump out because what we're scanning is their um, their energy from when they jump out into um, into uh, frame shift. Um, and so in the meantime, you know, you can have some fun shooting some stuff. Um, there's typically a lot of system security there. If not, then you might want to be careful. But uh you, you know you're gonna have a couple minutes to wait now once the time frame runs out to where ships are starting to jump out of that area then you're really gonna have plenty of wakes to scan and that's why i like doing it in decade it's a very uh it's a very active system for npcs and this nav beacon in decade like you cannot keep up with the amount of fsd um wakes that are in this area and anyway the beginning um Engineer is here, uh, Felic Felicity Farseer. So you're probably going to be here anyway. Anyway, so go to your contacts panel, um, and you're looking for high energy FSD wakes, and you want to try to find the one that's closest to you because they do disappear, and so it would you know be bad if you selected one that was really far away and you were getting up on it and then it disappeared. Um, and so try to always select the one that's closest to you and then boost over. Now, depending on the type of ship you're in and how fast it is, you're going to want to start to slow down once you get within range. Otherwise, you're going to overshoot the, the wake and you're going to have to pitch back or turn around. Um, so me, I usually let off the my boost around um, when I'm five kilometers away since I have a 4K range. So you scan it and then boom, you can see I got in the top right, um, I got atypical wake echoes. Um, and so that's it. So... In the rest of the video, I'll show you that I get all of the things mentioned for the video, but you don't have to stick around for the rest. That's it. This is all you have to do. Do this, you know, invest the time, do this for maybe an hour or two, and you'll have quite a bit of these uh, saved up to do engineering. 
Um, I have, I think, five or six fully upgraded um, FSD drives. So, you know, it takes a lot of materials. And so now I'm working on my Corvette. And so I ran out of some of these materials. And so here I am. But yeah, if you just sit here and do this for an hour or so, you'll have plenty to upgrade your ship. And you'll have some to upgrade towards your next ship. And so it's really, this part really isn't too bad at all. And so I've shown you the method. Um, I'm just going to talk through the rest of the footage um, because I do get everything on the list doing this. And it's pretty quick and easy, to be honest with you. And, you know, in between, if you want to do a little bit of combat on wanted ships or if there's, you can see all those green um, blips on my radar there. Those are all uh, security vessels. If you want to join in with them taking out wanted ships and just get some quick cash, you know, the credits, it's only like 20 to 80k per ship, but you know, whatever, hey, it's still fun, it gives you something else to do, get a little bit extra cash. Um, but yeah, this is it. So this is why I say you want a fast ship, um, because you are going to have to be, you know, traveling between 6 and maybe 20 kilometers per each echo, and so having a fast ship makes this get done a lot faster. Granted, you know, my Mamba, it's not the fastest ship, but it's a lot faster than your average ship. And when you boost the amount, with, with all my pips and engines, you can boost really often in this ship, which allows you to turn around quickly as well when you boost into a turn, so that's why I like it. Um, but yeah, this is going to be another atypical wake. Oh, no, the atypical disrupted. Yeah, so another one of those. And then I think on the next one we get something else, and the next one we get a couple of things, so pretty nice. Um, and that's it. You just keep looking at... Um, high energy wakes in your contacts tab and you just keep flying to them like this and that's it you just go up and scan them uh, pretty simple um, so I did learn the hard way one time not to do this in open play um, so on PlayStation 4 there is this one guy well there's a there's several people who camp decay just to grief people but there's this one guy who um, he'll he's definitely way better i mean yeah he's really good but anyway he'll uh interdict you and just totally wreck you but as long as you don't combat log you know he'll he won't mess with you for a little bit after that um and then you know i, I guess he remembers the I, I don't know i've talked to him before he's got me a couple times but after that first time he kills you he doesn't target you again for a while so um, but that's kind of his shtick, I suppose, but on the same token, you know, if you ask for help, he'll give you help. Um, and then, yeah, I jump, every once in a while I'll jump in and kill some stuff. That's also why I like having the Mamba. It's got the huge hard point on it, so you can hop in and, for the most, for the most part, you can kill things relatively easy. The only thing I usually have trouble with with the Mamba is when, um, there's like a group of enemies in a wing, and they're all like master or deadly or whatever and um there's no security around so it's really like a 1v3 that's the only time i really have trouble with this ship and i i, I don't have a lot of upgrades on this ship to be totally honest um but you know actually looking in the contacts tab that's a good point you can also use this opportunity while you're here to um gather other types of materials like you see in the contacts tab if you have a um collector limpet and some limpets with some space you could do that i don't have it on my mamba but you'd kind of be killing two birds with one stone especially considering how many system authority vessels are here um and so that's something that i'll typically do i don't think i have space in my mamba for that but maybe i'll look into that the next time i go to grind these out because that's a lot of materials that you could be stocking up on on this scan yeah i think that we're going to find uh, one of the different resources atypical okay so we got two so yeah and you can get more than one type of resource we got strange wake solutions so that was a one that we hadn't gotten yet and that's just to, i just wanted to show you all the different ones you can get by doing this um and i want to say that the strange wake solutions are the ones you need the most of but i'd have to look at the list again um but yeah it you know it's pretty relaxing doing this um, and it's pretty fun. Now, if you do overshoot your um, target, what you can do is start to thrust down, straight down, and then you can point your nose up as you thrust to maintain 
um, the target lock so that you don't have to flip back around. And that's what I'll do sometimes if I overshoot. Um, just because this isn't something you're going to put a lot of brain power into, to be honest. Um, yeah, what do we get? Atypical Disruptive Wake Echoes. And then I think this is one that I did the pitch thing. I don't remember. I know I did it a couple times when I was doing this, especially on the Mamba. It doesn't... Oh, that one disappeared. So that's a good example of why you, you know, A, you need a fast ship, and B, want to target one that's closest to you so they don't disappear like that. And then, you know, you don't waste your time trying to fly out there. All right. Is this the one? I think this is one I pitched down on. Let's see. No, nope, it's not. Anyway, um, let's see what we get on this one. <clears throat> uh, I guess we didn't get anything. I guess we didn't get anything on that one. That's okay, though. You'll, that, I think that's a rare occasion that you won't get anything, but as you can see, this is pretty simple, and I just kind of did this on the fly. I didn't cut up the footage or anything, and so that's just to show you that it's pretty straightforward doing this method, and pretty risk-free. I mean, I haven't been engaged, because I don't have anything good on me for someone, you know, for an NPC to want to engage me, and then if I want to jump in, I can, so it's kind of nice. All right, maybe this is the one that I overshot. Let's see. Uh, yep, this is the one I overshot, so I'll show you. What I'm going to do is start thrusting down when I get close. Or, yep, there it is, and then pitch your nose up. See, I would have passed right by it, but since you thrust down and then pitch your nose up, you can stay locked on. So, pretty neat little trick. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and until next time.